Chapter 4 Now when Mordecai knew all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes, and went out into the midst of the city, and cried with a loud and bitter cry. And he came even before the king's gate, for none might enter within the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was a great mourning among the Jews, and fasting, and weeping, and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. And Esther's maidens and her chamberlains came and told it her, and the queen was exceedingly pained, and she rent, and she sent raiment to clothe Mordecai, and to take his sackcloth from off him. But he accepted it not. Then called Esther, for Hattach, one of the king's chamberlains, whom he had appointed to attend upon her, and charged him to go to Mordecai to know what this was and why it was. So Hattach went forth to Mordecai, unto the broad place of the city which was before the king's gate, and Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him, and the exact sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasuries for the Jews to destroy them. Also he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given out in Shushan to destroy them, to show it unto Esther, and to declare it unto her, and to charge her that she should go in unto the king, to make supplication unto him, and to make request before him for her people. And Tatak came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Then Esther spoke unto Hatak and gave him a message unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and all the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king into the inner court, who is, who is not called, there is one law for him, that he be put to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. But I have not been called to come in unto the king these thirty days. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai bade them to return and answer unto Esther, Think not with yourself that you shall escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if you altogether holdeth your peace at this time, then will relief and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place, but you and your father's house will perish. And who knoweth whether you art not come to royal estate for such a time as this? Then Esther bade them return and answer unto Mordecai, Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast you for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast in like manner, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law, and if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way, and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. All right, let's go back up to verse 1. Now, in the last chapter, we remember Ahasuerus, the one who silences the poor. He had exalted Kaman, uh, the magnified one. I called him the magnified one. He was exalted in his position, and he had been set in uh, high command of the province or of Shushan and all the provinces that was under the rule of Ahasuerus. And the king had made a proclamation that everybody bowed down before Kaman. And we'll find Mordecai, that small portion of men, he would not bow down before Kaman. He, and neither do would the Jews because, see, this would be uh, a, their law, their law, because they, would, they only stooped before God and God's understanding. We'll find out. Not before men. It angered Kaman, and Kaman had had cast lots, and he had went to the king, and the king had made a decree and given Kaman his ring, and he had went out and made this decree in all the provinces to destroy the Jews utterly, and he even set a date to have it done. And this decree is where we would be picking it up when Mordecai, this small portion of men, would understand just what that decree was verse 1 now when Mordecai knew all that was done 
Mordecai he rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and bitter cry. So Mordecai, when he learns what has happened, that, that Haman has done this, Haman has went and made this, this declaration in all the provinces to destroy all the Jews because they their law was different, and we'll find out their law was not any indifferent than that they would not bow down before men and these that are appointed by men but that and we'll find out there was a, a sum weighed out there was a sum to be paid for all those people and all these souls and this this sum that was weighed out was was these 10,000 uh, talents of silver too and he came even before the king's gate for none might enter within the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. So he dresses in sackcloth. He goes out into the midst of the city, outside into the center of the city, this broad place where they, all the merchants used to gather, and he cries with this loud and bitter cry. And He even goes there before the king's gate, there where they would enter into the palace. But we'll find he doesn't go into the gate because they, you're not allowed to dress or clothed in sackcloth. And this was to be found in Lamentations, mourning. Those mourners were not allowed to enter into the king's gate. That's that place of judgment or the king's gate where he enters in and out. Three. And every province, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was a great mourning among the Jews, and fasting, and weeping, and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. And in every province, wherever the king's commandment went, and this commandment would be to destroy all the Jews, to, there was great mourning. There was crying, there was wailing, there was weeping, there was fasting, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. And this would be to show to put the flesh in great discomfort, see, to to cause it to to bear the burden of this. We'll find out, see, in the beginning that this was what God commanded. For and Esther's maidens and her chamberlains came and told it her, and the queen was exceedingly pained, and she sent raiment to clothe Mordecai and to take his sackcloth from off him, but he accepted it not. Esther's maidens, these would be the ones that tended to Esther. Esther is the star. Esther means star. And this light or this understanding even is coming from heaven, or even that place of understanding, I should say, had told, and her chamberlains, and these would be those eunuchs who were sent to keep over, watch over her and do whatever she was asked them to do. The queen was exceedingly pained. She, when... She understood what was going on, that all the those of Judah, those of Prasians, the Jews, would be destroyed. She sends this raiment, this clothing, to to give it to Mordecai, to cover him uh, instead of his sackcloth. This this sackcloth he was dressed in this morning. This is that 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 covering of mourning. Remember that sackcloth weaver has made. He would been working silently for a long period of time to create it and now it was the, that this period where they would put it on we'll find out see God making an example God's pressing it down pressing it down because all the Jews those appraisings are weeping and fasting and wailing dressed in sackcloth Mordecai he ain't going to accept this other raiment these other coverings these small portions of men he's going to remain in his morning, five, then called Esther for Hatak, one of the king's chamberlains, whom he had appointed to attend upon her, and charged him to go to Mordecai to know what this was and why it was. So Esther calls in Hatak, and he's one of the king's chamberlains, one of these eunuchs that are set over to care and to take care of, of course, Esther and the other women. Hatak means uh, certainly, certainty, a, or truly, or verily. And one of the kings, he was one of the king's chamberlains. He was appointed to attend to whatever Esther needed. 
And she tells him to go to Mordecai to know why or in, and what this was. And this decree, and we're going to find out, uh, Mordecai was the one who had touched it off, this small portion of men. So Hatak, verse 6, went forth to Mordecai unto the broad place of the city, which was before the king's gate. So that's what Hadok does, uh, this one of certainty. He goes forth to Mordecai, that small portion of men, to that broad place. That's where the, the, the wide place is in the city where, and this is generally where the crowds would gather. They would gather there, which was before the king's gate. And that's even the place where the king would sit in judgment. Seven, and Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him, and the exact sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasurers for the Jews, to destroy them. So Mordecai tells Hatak uh, all that had happened unto him, everything. He tells him the whole story. How this decree had went forth to bow down to Haman, and he hadn't bowed down. And this sum of money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasuries for the Jews to destroy them. And that, that sum of money was these 10,000 talents of silver. Ten, once again, that's the law. That's the law being weighed out there. And the fulfillments of it, see, being weighed out, that's those talents of silver. Even that, that price that's going to be paid for that generation is going to pass through the fire. We'll find out, though, but God, God has the ability. God has the ability to intervene, see. God is, he is the ruler. He is the ruler of kings. He is the ruler of rulers. There is none other. He is all the understanding of it all. Eight, also he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given out in Shushan to destroy them, to show it unto Esther and to declare it unto her, and to charge her that she should go in unto the king to make supplication unto him, and to make request before him for her people. As well now as telling Hatak about all these things that Haman was going to do, Mordecai also gives him a copy of the writing of that decree that was given out in Shushan. That, that's that springing forth, even that understand that he will get to destroy them, to show it unto Esther, and to declare it unto her, to show her what this decree says, and tell her all, all of it, the whole story, and to charge her, that's to tell her to, that she should go in unto the king, and to make supplication unto him for her people. Nine, and Hatak came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. So Hatak, he goes back to Esther, that's that one of certainty. He goes back to the this understanding that shines. That's that's the star. The words of Mordecai, that small portion of man. That even that small portion that was given to man, ten. That that's the law. Then Esther spoke unto Hatak and gave him a message unto Mordecai. Then Esther, she speaks she tells Hatak to take this message back to Mordecai. Eleven, all the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come in unto the king into the inner court, who is not called, there is one law for him that he be put to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter that he may live. But I have not been called to come in unto the king these thirty days. And this message she sends back to Mordecai is simple, that everybody knows that you don't go before the king because there's just one law. See, to them that go before the king, that, that he didn't call in there to bother the king, uh, where he sits on his throne is certain death. Unless he holds out his golden scepter, that golden scepter, why, that's his, his rule, that's that which represents his rule, and that he may live. If you found grace in the king, and he held out his, the rule to you, this golden scepter, that gold, that's what belongs to God anyway. That scepter represents his rule, his law, that, he, that you may live. But we'll find out. See, Esther says she hasn't been called. 
these 30 days. These 30 days, 3, three tens is 30. 3 tens. See, that is going to complete. It's going to be that which completes, or that we can witness the, the complete uh, 3 even. Uh, these tens, that's the law in understandings. 12, and they told it to Mordecai, Esther's words. So, they told to Mordecai, Esther's words, and that would be the servant she sent with Hatak. Uh, these, these words that Esther had told him, that you, nobody goes before the king. 13, the Mordecai bade them to return answer unto Esther. Think not with yourself that you shall escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. So Mordecai, this small portion of man, he, men, he's going to tell them. That you tell Esther that don't think she's going to escape from this and just because she's in the king's house, 14. For if you altogether hold your peace at this time, then will relief and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish, and who knoweth? whether you are not come to royal estate for such a time as this. And Mordecai tells him that, to tell Esther that don't think and don't hold your peace at this time because if, if you altogether do, then will relief and deliverance come to the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. See, because God's going to deliver, God's going to deliver uh, those appraisings those that praise him, those that give their, all the glory to God, will find out. But he tells Esther that her and her father's house will come to naught. Because who knows, who knows whether or not you are come to real estate for such a time as this. And we're going to find out that was the exact reason Esther had been brought to her royal estate. See, we'll find out. It was for this this period, for this time, 15, then Esther bade them return, answer unto Mordecai. So when her servants come back and they tell her what Mordecai has said, this small portion of man, she sends them back to Mordecai. 16, go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast you for me, neither eat nor drink three days, night or day, I also and my maidens will fast in like manner, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Esther, she sends word back to Mordecai, and she tells him to get together all those, all the Jews that are in, that are there in the city of Shushan, or in that place of Shushan, that's that, that's that which is springing forth to fast, to deny themselves for Esther, and to neither eat nor drink three days. And these three days, we're going to find out, that's going to be to complete these understandings. Night or day, night or day, whatever your understanding may be, that period, because the night and the day are the whole cycle of a day, of a one period of a day, this darkness and this light. I also, in my maid, she says, will fast in like manner. And her and her maidens are going to do the same. And she has agreed that she will go to the king, uh, whether she perish or not, because, see, we'll find out. Either way, Esther was going to perish, 17, by the decree, 17. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. So Mordecai, that's that small portion, he's going to, Go now to all those that are in Shushan, all those of Yudah that are in Shushan, according to what Esther has asked him to do, and he's going to ask them to fast and and, and these three days. That we're, and we're going to pick it up here tomorrow in the next chapter, chapter 5. Turn and return.